Okay guys, so here we are at the end of our Digging Deeper, Digging Deeper with Lawrence Rab. This is our final Friday. Um, and on this final Friday, I have a final prompt for you. And of course it's based off of a Lawrence Rab poem. And in this case, we're looking at the poem Water. So I'm just gonna jump right into it and read to you his poem Water. Water. Actually, before I do that, do you guys smell books? Do you like to smell books? This is an old book and I can smell it from here. And like all I want to do is just stick my face in it and smell it for a long time. But on the theme of plants, painting, and poetry, uh, you can look this stuff up online, but you can find like that specific like book smell. You know the one I'm talking about. So a lot of things go into the makeup of it, like what paper was used, what glue was used, where it was kept. But basically what you're smelling when you smell that book smell is um, little organisms, like little mold, mold. Plants are growing in your books, people, and that's that smell. So the smell, that specific, oh, like there's nothing like it in the world, that book smell. It's actually the smell of mold in your books. I love that. Oh, it's so good. Okay. Water by Lawrence Rabb, part one. Whichever way water turns, it touches itself, turning in another direction, invisible now, now reflecting whoever finds himself looking beneath the line of the wind. You remember the rules. Water seeks the level that pleases it, making a place for itself wherever it chooses, calling everything it touches its own and falling back in its own good time, too. Hundreds of feet beneath you, it creeps along a fault, drop by drop, widening the rock, softening an edge, breaking off a splinter. So a cave blossoms. Water counts the time, but does not care. You could learn from it, speak to it of your troubles, ask about your wound, why it refuses to heal, ask about absence. Water has spent a long time learning how to fill with itself the space of the missing thing. Three, wherever it can go, water goes. On your window, the early frost has drawn a map and the small cloud of your breath fades from the blade of the knife. The shape of someone like yourself drifts in the shelter of still water, you reach down, a maze of circle, circles meets your hand. Oh. Do you ever, do you ever find a poet and you're like, how, how did I exist before without this? I, I really don't know. I don't know how I existed in the world before Lawrence Rabb, and I didn't know that. Thank you, Suzanne Lummis. So. Also, um, poets follow poets because poets will tell you where to find the poets. <sighs> that's, that's all I gotta tell you. Um, so I love this line, wherever it can go, water goes, right? I love also this idea that water knows how to fill empty spaces. There's just a lot of like sort of clever, clever little statements about water that also I think are, um, kind of just helpful for getting through the day. I don't know what else to say about that. So I love, okay, this is I think the best piece of advice in the poem, though there's a lot of really great lines in the poem, wherever it can go, water goes. And I think that goes back to living in possibility. I think that goes back to like living your most curious self, not being afraid of whether or not you get the answer or get it correct. You're just looking, you're just going where water goes. And Water takes on the form of wherever it is at, right? So just go. So where I'm gonna have you go this Friday is I want you to read a poem, any poem. I don't care what poem. And then once you're done reading it, you can set it aside and just kind of in the mindset, cause like once you read a poem, you start thinking in poem. And that just, that's why poets need to read poetry is because it's much easier to write it if you're reading it because it just changes the way your brain works a little bit reading it and then you're able to write it because your brain has changed right so read a poem and then write non-stop i mean like 
like it's like stream of consciousness writing right so if you like get to a point where you don't know what to write about at all you don't know what to say next you're like i don't know what to say i don't know what to say i don't know what to say okay i'm bored saying that so i'm going to tell you about the color yellow um you know what i mean just free association like i said if you come to a stopping point you just repeat i don't know i don't know i don't know until you do know because the mind will always take you someplace whether you like it or not wherever it can go water goes and you're gonna go with it. So write nonstop for 30 minutes. Once you have like, who knows how many pages of writing, you're gonna be upset by that 30 minutes. Everyone is, including myself. Because after the third minute, you're like, what else is there to say, right? And that's when you start going really strange places. So the moment where you think you can't go any further and you push yourself just a little bit more, that's where poetry is. So that's why the 30 minutes, just try once in your life. You don't have to do it ever again. Just once. One set of 30 minutes. And think how much those 30 minutes will belong to you, right? 30 minutes that are completely yours and no one else's. That's pretty great. All right, so that is the end. Sorry, I get so nervous about how long or short these things will be, so I just don't breathe. I should work on that, the breathing part. All right. Happy Friday, happy writing.